Hello, my fellow Ethereans. This is Mike Jenkins with episode 13, Wish Me Luck. And this time around, we are doing Perfuma here on the Shira Princess of Power Comprehensive Review Series. Perfuma. Um, I in the last episode, I called her the Moss Man of Princess of Power. And here's why. Perfuma was released in the second wave of Princess of Power in 1986. According to the Sander Brothers Mattel presentation, Perfuma seems to have started off as two separate characters. One was named Jasmine, the other was Tara. As the 1986 line continued developing, concepts were either dropped, merged, or repurposed to remain on budget. Elements of the Jasmine character and the Terra character were merged into one figure and Perfuma was born. As with other pop characters or Princess of Power characters, Perfuma takes action feature cues from Masters of the Universe characters, in this case, Moss Man, and perhaps even Stinkor. Moss Man and Stinkor both had scented features with their characters. Uh, Mossman had uh, a sort of piney, a sweet piney smell. And Stinkor, who was his evil warrior equivalent in the Masters of the Universe line, had a stinky, musky, patchouli smell. He smelled like a very ripe hippie. And so for Perfuma and the Princess of Power line, she took her action figure or action feature cue from Mossman for the most part, and she has a, a, a sweet, rosy scent to her. Her vintage character bio reveals that she has the ability to produce a sleep mist or a sleep gas. More focus is put on that in the mini comics and on, in the toy continuity uh, versus her ability to control plants in all other continuities. Perfuma was also released in the Defenders of Good 3-pack along with She-Ra and Sweet Bee. She is introduced in the mini comic A Most Unpleasant Present where she maintains the gardens of the Laughing Swan Inn. Catra shows up with a present that turns the gardens into vicious plant creatures. Perfuma shows the ability to gas Catra with a sleep mist, which stalls the feline mistress long enough for Shira to arrive. Perfuma also appears in several UK comic stories. For example, in the UK comic A Thorny Problem, she helps thwart a spell cast by Shadow Weaver that has a thorny briar patch consuming all of Whispering Woods. In the cartoon series, she is voiced by Erica Scheimer, and she appears in two episodes as well as the Christmas special. She is depicted as a very powerful ecomancer, or flower maiden, or plant elemental. In the episode Flowers for Hordak, she is captured and placed in a horde dungeon. Though captured, she shows no fear of Hordak and his evil horde cohorts and proceeds to coat the fright zone with beautiful flora. Hordak ends up begging Shira to take her away. Flowers for Hordak happens to be the definitive Perfuma episode if you wanted to see her in full on action. This is Vintage Perfuma, uh, released in 1986. She looks a bit different from her cartoon counterpart. Uh, unlike some of the other characters in the Wave 2 line of Princess of Power, the Wave 2 had a tendency to do a better job of looking like their uh, cartoon counterparts. Although, you know, going from case to case, you can see some discrepancies in some of the characters. Um, but for the most part, you could look at the figures and you can definitely see that there is a, a stronger relationship 
to the cartoon designs in comparison to the toy designs. Uh, wave one was where a lot of significant discrepancies occurred. Uh, and they seem to have cleaned that up by the time they got to wave two a little bit. So with Perfuma here, she does not have the flowery hat uh, that she sports in the cartoon series. That seems to be replaced by the, the flower backpack that she has. And the action feature there is that the flower extends and it retracts. Uh, presumably, uh, this is how the sleep gas would be emitted from Perfuma. The backpack is detachable. And it could also double as a, a gun, I suppose, if you wanted to get aggressive with your Princess of Power figures. But, you know, I typically use mine for display. The figure came with her dress, very fluffy, plumy dress. She also came with her green comb and her green shield. I did not get those with this figure. She has some pretty decent detailing on her gauntlets and her boots, as well as her bodice, and she's got some interesting uh, little rose or flower details on her belt. Uh, let's see, let's turn her around here. She has the holes in her back for the backpack that we did detach, and she has your typical articulation in the arms, the legs, and she can turn her head side to side, and she has the ball jointed head so she can do head tilts. Uh, this figure originally came scented, but over time that scent does go away. The Masters of the Universe Classics Perfuma action figure was released in 2015. On her bio, her real name is Tara, which is possibly a nod to one of her original concepts, which was named Tara. This figure came scented as well, and I believe that the scent that they used with this figure was reproduced from the scent that was on the original figure. I know that both Stinkor and uh, Mossman replicated their original vintage scents, so I have strong suspicion that Perfuma did the same thing. She came with her uh, bazooka rose bush gun or whatever. Uh, the rose petal does not fire, but it does detach. Um, it's very heavy, so uh, attempting to put the gun in Perfuma's hand is difficult. She can't hold it up. And she also came with her shield. She was very detailed, or she is a very detailed figure. The Four Horsemen did a wonderful job taking cues from her vintage figure, and there's some great uh, plant details on her gauntlets. The gauntlets kind of have a petal, petal look to them. Uh, she also has wonderful details on her boots with the rose tips, which is also a nod from the vintage figure. Her belt as well takes nods from the, the vintage figure. And there's beautiful uh, etching, like vine plant detailing on her dress. Her hat is removable. And again, there's detailing on the back. Of the, of the dress and on the belt, as well as on the boots. So I would say that the Four Horsemen did a great job with uh, taking the design 
of the filmation figure and then cross crossing that design with the cartoon series. The cartoon series had very little detailing and she actually wore slippers in the cartoon. She wore pink ballerina styled slippers whereas the figure had the boots and so there is that strong crossbreeding there and I personally prefer the boots. They're more practical than the booties even though she is a, a plant elemental who needs battle boots, right? Um, but that's my bias. It looks more like the figure even though the color scheme is darker. Uh, the color scheme is darker, uh, more reflective of the cartoon series, whereas the the vintage figure had lighter colors. It was a softer color palette. Uh, but uh, again, I, th I think they did a good job of crossing the, the two designs. She has the typical articulation. She has limited articulation in her head, of course, because of her hair. Uh, but she still does have the ability to to tilt it uh, to the left and right. She has the shoulder articulation, articulation at the bicep, uh, elbow. She can rotate the wrist. She's got the waist articulation. And, of course, her legs or hips are good. Knee articulation. And she's got the ankle articulation. I think she turned out to be a good figure. A lot of people aren't too sure about her. Her personality in the cartoon series was a bit flighty, a, a bit ditzy, and she really didn't uh, care about being captured by the evil horde. They didn't scare her. She didn't seem to have any fear of them, and she's possibly a very powerful character uh, which is a reason why they didn't use her as much but that's that's just a theory of mine but Hordak seemed to be very put off by her very threatened by her she was able to neutralize um, uh, the fright zone's darkness with her her flowering plant abilities and he seemed to want to get rid of her before she could cause any more damage to the the fright essence of the fright zone. And that's just a theory of mine, but anyway. Uh, so that is Perfuma. And that is episode 13. I didn't break my ankles or have any bad luck, so thank goodness for that. Join me next time for Sweet Bee in episode 14. And until then, ta-ta for now.